Okay, good morning everybody. Are you ready for an awesome talk? Yeah, I need your energy. Okay, so my name is Tomer Barr and I am the VP of Security Research at SafeBridge. And actually, this is our 10 qualified talk to Black at USA. Uh, I've been around for 20 years. I have uh, spoken in many conferences. And this year I was qualified to speak to a Black Hat talk and one DEF CON talk. Hey everyone, I'm Shmuel Cohen, and I've been working in the cybersecurity field for about five years now. I began my career as a developer and later moved on to a security research position where I did APT malware research. Today, my primary focus is vulnerability research at SafeBridge. And actually, this is my first time at Black Hat, so I hope you find this uh, talk interesting. And back to you, Thomas. Thank you. So let's begin. We will start by introducing our research goal and approach then we will detail step by step on how we discover this vulnerability and how we use it within more than 10 different attack vectors. So we have seven demos, so keep tuned. And we will close the talk with our takeaways, the vendor response, and the GitHub repository before leaving time for Q&A. So during the last year, our team was focused on EDR, arbitrary deletion vulnerabilities. Our fellow team member, Ori Ayer, presented his Aikido research, a mislead defender, and additional EDRs to delete the wrong file by abusing time of check, time of use vulnerability, resulting in total deletion of all user and OS files after a restart. Then, Omer and myself conducted our second research that we presented here on this stage yesterday, and we found a way to insert, delete, or modify any Defender byte signatures by initiating the Defender signature update. The attack vectors that were achieved were arbitrary deletions of both user and OS file and generic bypass of any known malware in the world and even, even possible local privilege escalation. But although these vulnerabilities are awesome, right? Uh, they are limited to only local attack vectors. And in this research, we will explain how we were able to discover remote attack vectors and deletion of critical files. So our goal is to be able to confuse EDR products by remotely implanting a malware signature into legit files and making them believe the legit files are actually malicious. For an analogy, Defender usually recognizes Taylor Swift as benign. We will try to implant a small modification mark, and Defender will think that the Taylor Swift is actually malicious, actually malicious evil, and do his best to eliminate it. So something like that. So to conclude our teaser, what will you say if we can remotely delete your critical files over the internet without authentication, even if you use different security controls or use Windows or Linux fully patched servers. In the next hour, we are going to prove that this is definitely possible. We add three challenges. First, false positive or false alarm are known problems for a long time, and security controls which are installed on hundreds of millions of endpoints are already probably immune to false positive, right? But moreover, the false positive we are aiming to achieve are even more rare, since we would like to trigger the byte signature engine, which considered to be the most trusted layer with the lowest false positive rate, right? And last, the last challenge was how to trigger it from remote. So let's begin. The goal of the step one is to find a signature that will trigger automatic deletion when appended to our empty file. We decided to use black box approach instead of a white box, since each security vendor's product used a different proprietary database format, and the research goal was to discover as many vulnerabilities in many, as many products uh, as possible, and black box was the best strategy for that. We also decided to focus first 
on Windows Defender, which is the default EDR installed in hundreds of millions of Windows agents and servers, and even more. And we assume that VirusTotal use Windows Defender's same engine as the regular Windows Defender installed on every endpoint. VirusTotal also provided easy hunting capabilities. For example, query for all detected malwares by Microsoft and limit it by 200 byte size binaries, as you can see above. We ran this query and got 3,600 results. The first example is a binary detected as a joke VBS Terrier malware family. The file size is 120 bytes. We verified that this file is indeed detected by Defender agent. So we understood that our query provided us with a good start. Now we decided to minimize the file to a minimal byte signature that will still trigger Defender. Let's go over a simple example to understand our technique. As we can see in the example, we started with the XABCY string, and it's a detected signature. Let's say it's a detected signature. So we removed the first letter X and wrote the file to disk in order to trigger Defender to scan the file again. We still got a detection, so it means that X is not part of the signature. But when we removed A and wrote it to disk, we got a detection. So it's essential part of the signature. B and C were essential too. And finally, we removed the last Y, we got detection, so Y is not a part of the signature, and the final minimal signature is ABC, right? It's very easy. So back to our joke VBS file, we started with 120 letters, and in the same way, we manually started to remove each letter of the malicious signature and scanning the file again. The result was a 71 character length signature marked in red. That's, that's a, by a long triggers Defender. We can see that Windows Defender indeed detect our file as malicious, but the alert is medium, and the file is not automatically deleted, and the default action is manually steps required, as you can see, which is not good for us. So we decided to learn more about Defender threat levels by reading the documentation. The MP threat class includes an interesting field named Severity AD. We found out that there are four levels of threat severities, low, moderate, high, and critical. And severe, sorry. And the default action to be taken for each threat severity. We assume that the most severe threat level will probably have a more severe default remediation action. And we verified our assumption was correct by reversing Defender. As you can see on the right, it's a little bit small. I hope you can see it. And this is the logic of the scanner. Looking deeper, we found out that the class MP thread detection, which includes the additional action bitmask with all possible action Defender supports to mitigate a threat. So our goal is to find a severe level signature that will trigger automatic deletion of our file. We found this short J script as the minimal signature of malicious Trojan in red. We can see that Windows Defender found it as a severe, but this is actually a special script case since the file was not entirely deleted, but only the script part was removed from the file. This is a nice progress, but we would like to have the ability to delete the entire content of the file and not the script, right? So it's not good enough. So we continue our manual search for the right signature, but it took us too much time and failed attempts. So we understood that we should shift from manual process into an automatic process. So we downloaded all the 36 under malwares from our original virus total hunting query and developed a first very basic tool to automatically extract the minimal signature from each malware. As I said, the script was very basic, just automating the manual process that we described. We found out that large part of the sample were actually a variant of the same malware. 
eventually we found only 130 unique signatures. But how do we know which will be the best signature? Since we assume that there are going to be limitation in the implanting of the signatures in legit files, we had to prioritize the different signatures in order to find the best signature in the database with the minimum limitation. We believe that the alphanumeric signature will have less limitation. We also might have length limitation, so we would like to use very short signature. We found a signature marked in red, it's a little bit small, uh, which seemed to be the best candidate since it was only alphanumeric. The signature is actually a base 64 of the ACAR signature, which is the standard antivirus test file. But according to the ICAR specification, EDRs limit the detection and it's only triggering if the target file contains the exact signature without any extra, extra characters after it. <laughs> and it's the same for the base 64 version and we verified that it's not working. So again, it's not good signature for our purposes. But then we found the second signature, which is only 15 characters length and consists of only two types of non alphanumeric characters, a slash and a curly brackets. Let's try to manually add it to an empty file. And it worked. This signature caused the deletion of our own file. And it was the first time we managed to find a minimal signature which successfully triggered automatic deletion of our file. But deleting our own empty file is not interesting. Our next, next step was quite obvious, verifying that we can manually append the signature to a target legit file and not to our own file. We try to manually append this signature in the middle of another existing document. And for our surprise, it didn't work. So we developed another faster minimizer, which called defender scan exported function. Instead of dropping each iteration to disk and waiting for the detection as we did in the first minimizer. This is much faster since Defender does not quarantine files at all using this technique. The tool reads the target malware from excluded path and replace each byte with the letter Z. And rescan it. If the verdict tends to be nine, then it restores the Z to the original bytes. Let's see an example of running our minimizer on a larger file on Mimikatz binary. This is the output after minimization. For any extension, Windows Defender will check if the file is a portable executable file by checking if the file starts with the magic bytes MZ and if the content in the ELFA new field offset is equal to PE, as you can see at the offset 120 there. If this is a PE file, it will scan for signatures in the entire file until it will reach the Mimikatz signature. As you can see in this example, it will be in the offset D130. This file with textual extension and with 99% the letter Z is detected by Defender as Mimikatz. So it's crazy, right? So, when we appended Mimikat signature to a middle of legit portable executable file, it worked. The problem is that we could not think of any interesting vector on PE. Because if the user already have privilege to write to the PE, he probably can delete it anyway, right? So we have to focus on non-executable files and understand the reason why it failed to detect it in our signature, using our signature. So, we develop additional tool to understand the non-PE limitations. The tool tried to embed the same signature in incremental offset from the beginning of the file to its end. We found out very interesting stuff that in the case of non-PE, Defender does not scan the entire file, probably for efficiency reason. It scans only the first and last 4,030 bytes. It means that we must append our signatures to those sections in the target file 
And if we can do that, we will be able to delete non-PE file automatically. So until this point, we were focused on learning how to locally trigger automatic deletion. Now we should plan how to achieve remote attack vectors. So we need a way to somehow make a privileged service to write our data to a remote file. The first idea that came into our mind were logs. If we will be able to send an HTTP request with our signature to a web server, and this web server will log our request, we will be able to trigger remote deletion, right? Remote deletion of the defender installed on the web server to delete the log. But we wonder which HTTP field to use. So we wander around, we look around and found that IIS log contains a user agent field and it's a long free text string which is written entirely to a daily single log file of all client requests, not just our request, all customer requests in the same day. So this should be the perfect place to include our signature. Shmuel will continue from here. Thank you, Tomer. So, now let's explore our first attack vector, remote deletion of IIS web server logs. In this demo, we will see a remote deletion of IIS web server logs. We ran this attack on latest Windows 11 machine, and I'm starting by getting the IP address of the victim machine. Then I'm will, I will serve to the web server, and it just to show you that logs has been written to the log file. Now let's navigate to the logs folder, where we will see our access log file with the logs that's been written. So navigating to the logs folder, and there it is. These are the logs that has been written from our session now. Now I'm using a simple Python script to send a numerous amount of malicious user agents to the web server. It will take a few seconds, and then we will see how it will affect the access log file. So waiting a few seconds, it's done. Now let's see the access log file. And the first time it didn't work because the, the logs hasn't been written yet to the log file. But the second time we try to access it, it's not like lo no longer available. Defender trigger, uh, triggered and detected as malicious. Therefore, it's no longer available and it will be deleted after a reboot. So the access log file will be deleted. As you saw in the demo and you can see in this picture, Defender detects the IIS log as an RTF exploit and it will be deleted after reboot. Well, IIS is a good example for Windows servers, but most web servers install on Linux. And in Linux, there is no EDR installed by default. So we aim to trigger other EDR solutions that are likely to be installed on Linux web servers. As you can see, according to Gartner Magic Warden, these are the leading EDR products on the market. We aim at them since they are likely to be installed on enterprise servers. As of now, we confirmed the effectiveness of our technique, and we now have the ability to automatically reduce the size of signatures in a way that would trigger automatic deletion. With this knowledge, the next step was quite obvious. We wanted to create a database of what we name as evil signatures for various leading EDR vendors. This database will allow us to perform a single signature queries capable of triggering most, if not all, of the EDR solutions. This method is beneficial for remote attacks when we don't know which EDR is installed on the remote machine. So we wanted to check if our method works on EDR products other than Defender. And we discovered that EDR products have different behaviors. Some of them only scale files with specific extensions. Some worked only if the signature were presented in the beginning of the file. And some of them uses machine learning algorithms in order to detect files, which are not vulnerable to our attack vectors. This reduced our attack vectors against, against those EDRs. After searching for leading EDR product that suits our needs, we found out that Kaspersky EDR for Linux does exactly what we were looking for. Therefore, in the next Linux examples, we will focus on targeting servers with Kaspersky EDR installed on them. By the way, 
And either side goal that we had is to find a signature that would trigger most of the vulnerable EDRs. It will be perfect in the case when we don't know which EDR is installed on the target machine. After some tries, we found the signature for triggering Kaspersky, but it also triggered Defender. So now, let's see a demo of remotely delete Nginx web server logs installed on Linux with Kaspersky. So, here we can see on the right side a simple Ubuntu machine with Nginx web server installed on it. As you can see, I'm trying now to remove manually the log files with, from, a weak, from a weak user, and it won't, be, it won't work because the weak user doesn't have permissions to delete this log file. Now I will just watch the access log file and see how we can affect it. So putting a watch on the log file, Okay, now let's hit few time refresh and we can see that if each refresh will cause the logs to be written. Now I will use another simple Python script to insert manually a user agent. So I'm starting by inserting a test user agent just to show you that it's working. So test and test two, works, works. And now I will insert a malicious signature as a user agent and let's see what will happen. So malicious signature, hit enter, and at the moment that I hit and enter, this file is deleted. It's no longer available, Kaspersky deleted, and let's see if we can restore it. Maybe we can restore it and everything will be fine. Trying to restore it, and nope, it just kept deleting again and again because Kaspersky detects it as a malicious. The same method works on Apache web servers as well. So to sum up, by using a short signature, we allegedly will be able to delete up to 35% of web server logs in the world. That's pretty amazing. We prove it only with Kaspersky on Linux, but it can be expanded to other security vendors as well. In the next few slides, we are going to show short examples of different attack vectors that we thought of. The first one will be FTP server. Not only web server logs are at risk, Fizilla FTP server, for example, will be at risk too. This time, using a minimized signature from the invoke Mimikets PowerShell malware, we use its username for the FTP login. This malicious username will be written to the FTP server logs, which will cause Defender to delete them. So no more FTP logs at this machine. Another one is an email attack scenario using Mozilla Thunderbird. This time, the attacker sends an email to the victim with a subject that includes our malicious signature. Then, as designed, Mozilla Thunderbird stores the entire inbox in a single textual file that contains our signature. The local inbox will be removed by the EDR and Thunderbird will try to download it again. This will cause a non-stop loop of downloading and deleting the inbox file. Another cool vector is by executing a corrupted MSI file. The subject field in the MSI properties will include the evil signature. This will cause a log record that contains the evil signature to be appended to the application windows event log file, which will trigger a um, defender that will delete this file. So the event log file will be deleted because we put the evil signature in the properties. This is not the end. What about achieving deletion of Windows security log files, but remotely this time? Is it possible? Yes, the answer is yes. By attempting to perform remote login to the machine via SMB, using a malicious username, we can remotely insert malicious records into the security event log file. If we repeat this process enough times, the records will end up at the end of the log file, resulting in their deletion. Let's see a demo of that. So, again, running latest Windows 11 machine. And I'm starting by getting the IP address of the target machine. And on the left side, I will run a SMB login script that will try many times to log in with a malicious username. It will take a few minutes, but we short up the video. And now I will scan the Windows log folder and let's see what will happen. So let's open the scan uh, option in Windows Defender and navigate to the Windows event log uh, 
for them. Hitting scan, and now the security event log file is considered as Mimikatz malicious file. So after reboot, it will delete it with all the security event logs that you have on your computer. Self-cannibalism. Let's see how we trick Defender to delete its own, log, own detection logs from a weak user. So we started by creating a folder, um, again, running on latest Windows 11 machine, of course. And it, we start by uh, creating a new folder and name it as a malicious signature. So we have a signature that suits a folder name. Let's put the name as the folder. And a defender just jump in and say, this says, now it's malicious. And this um, activity will be added to defender logs file, which if we now scan them, we will see that it's now malicious. So just a few seconds, we will go into defender logs file folder. There it is. And let's see how many files. It's not only one file. Actually, it's many files that are now considered as malicious. All the detection logs the defender has, all the detection history will be deleted. So it's a perfect way to, um, you know, um, clean up evidence. OK, so now we understand that we can remotely delete logs. But we can achieve even more. Let me ask you a question. What happens to logs in enterprises? Well, as all rivers flow to the sea, all logs flow to a SIEM database. For example, Splunk, which is a central point to monitor, search, and analyze logs. Let's see how we may trigger a domino effect against Splunk. So, we started by verifying that by manually adding a log file with a name that includes an evil signature, Splunk will write the name of the file to its own database, which will cause Defender to delete entire Splunk DB. The same goal can achieve automatically as a resulting of the domino effect when an infe infected Windows event log file will be collected by Splunk it will be added to SplunkDB, which again, caused Defender to delete it. So think about it, SplunkDB, completely gone. Logs are definitely not the only thing that we can attack. Let's see two virtual machine attacks vectors that done under VMware. We started by taking a look on the VMX file of the guest machine, which is the configuration file of the VM. This file is mandatory for the machine to boot up. The machine cannot boot up without it. We wanted to check if the guest machine can write data to this file in order to implant our malicious signature in this file. We searched for a communication originated from the guest machine to the host. And after digging a little bit, we found out the VMware tools provide a tool called RPC tool. This tool allows you to communicate with the host machine. One of the things that can be done with RPC tool is to set global variables that some of them are like the guest info detail data, as you can see in the picture. These uh, variables are kept in the VMX file at the host machine. So if I set this variable to be malicious, it means that this file on the host machine will be malicious, and maybe Defender will delete it? Let's see. So as you can see, at the moment that I execute in the command form this uh, terminal, the machine is completely freeze, and we get an error message that the vMix file is unavailable because it's malicious, which means that the guest machine cannot boot up again. So it's complete uh, DOS attack from the guest machine. But wait, there is even more. This attack is nice, but it targets only the configuration file. What about targeting the virtual machine data itself? Is it possible? Yes. The answer is yes. We did it by creating numerous amount of malicious files, as you can see in this demo, and we write them into the disk. So writing many, many, many malicious files into the disk will cause those files to be written in the VMDK files, which are files on the host machine. So in the host machine, you have VMDK files that contains the date of the machine. We are writing a lot of malicious files into um, this folder. So I will put a one malicious files, and this script will just duplicate them a lot of time, like 100,000 times. And at the moment it will end, I will reboot the machine, and let's see what will happen. So rebooting the machine. Actually, I shut it down, but it's the same. 
And Defender jumped in the host machine and saying that the VMDK files are malicious. So even if I will try to boot up the machine again, it just won't work. So in a case that someone is in the guest machine and doing this action, no one can, uh, it, it can just uh, get inside the machine again. Now, Tomer will continue by talking about remote deletion of production databases. So, have you liked it so far? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But we saved the best for last. So, the crown jewels of most organizations are not stored in files, but rather in databases, right? Uh, so, only, we only show you how to delete files. Can we also remotely delete entire production database over the internet? Let's see an example. Usually, users don't have privilege to directly insert a query to a remote database. But the scenario of a website using a database in the backend is very common. And if this database have, if this website, sorry, has a form which we can send data to to be stored in the DB, for example, register the new user or any other mean, we can remotely trigger Defender to delete the database with no authentication required, and this is a very common attack vector. Let's see a demo. So in this demo, we are going to implement our own invoke Mimiket signature into MariaDB database via a website form and try to trigger Defender to delete the database. Let's start the demo. So this is just an example of a simple form that we created. We will just insert test signatures in order to see that it works. We have a second page that viewed the talk content and we can see that the insertion succeeded, right? And we'll do it uh, again, just to show it's working. Okay, now we'll go to the malicious part and we'll do it slowly, but uh, we will insert uh, the name malicious and in the middle, we'll just put our simple signature. And now, we'll try to view the database. And we can see that it's worked. It's inserted into the database. Now, we'll just keep doing like regular activities. We will watch at logs. Let's open a log file, close it, and just doing regular stuff like viewing the port not changing it, even just okay, and boom, Defender will trigger, and it will trigger, trigger on a lot of default action, and it detected it as Mimikets, and this is the database. The entire database file is detected as Mimikets because just one string. So you saw, it's a very short one. The database may be terabytes of data. Defender doesn't care. It deleted the, all, the, all the database. We try to reconnect denial of service. Uh, okay, let's try to insert something. I don't know, let's see if we can like revive it in, a, in any way, maybe. No, sorry, uh, not working. So if you have the permanent denial of service, even if you do a service restart, OS restart, if you have a backup, you try to restore from backup, won't work. The database is gone, you have a permanent denial of service. Okay, so we tried this attack on the most popular databases out there. And the attack worked both on Windows and Linux as well. I will show you another example against MySQL database and Kaspersky as the vulnerable EDR this time. So we're running on Linux, we're running MySQL, we have a different form we will test it in the same way. We can see that it at the beginning it includes some records. We will add our own. This is just for testing. You can see that it worked. The test, the test string is there. Now we'll copy our signature for Kaspersky, which works also for Defender. And we can see that it was inserted automatically to the database. And after just a second, Kaspersky uh, detect the database as malicious. Let's try to restore it. First, we'll try to see if it's working. No, not working anymore. 
you lose connection. Uh, then we'll try to restore the files. And not working as well. So what, what can you do at that point? And let's try again to insert something. Believe me, it, it won't work. And we'll also show you that the backend script cannot connect. And this is actually game over. OK, so in the same way, we were able to remotely delete Postgres, SQLite, and MongoDB on both Linux and Windows. And we will release the demos in our GitHub repository, all of them. So imagine how many major websites uses those four different databases out there. But until now, we saw multiple remote attacks, vectors against servers and web services. Now we will demonstrate the opposite attack when a web server can attack the client browser. So this time, the attacker sends a link to the victim. And when the victim clicks it, his browser will send an HTTP request to the malicious web server. And the malicious web server will return the signature in the response. For example, let's say in the cookie. And then the browser will log the response to its own DB, and Defender will delete it. So this is an example of a remote deletion of Chrome history and web data databases. Just an example, we can do a lot more in this attack vector as well. So we believe that the 10 attack vectors we have discovered are just the tip of the iceberg. And regarding cloud attacks, literally the sky is not the limit. Since Defender is embedded in multiple critical points in all major clouds vendors, so imagine what can be the damage there. To conclude the vulnerability root cause, Windows Defender is in a catch-22 syndrome. It cannot, it cannot allow a malware to exist on the user endpoint, but this can be used against it. And the reason for the false positive is because it relies on legacy binary signature detection, which is sensitive for a small modification instead of machine learning algorithms, which consider multiple features and probably won't detect MySQL special format database as a VBS malware, right? So we reported to the relevant vendors uh, at the beginning of the year. And Microsoft issued a fix to the vulnerability on April and assigned this CVE ID. The patch fixed some of the attack vectors, but if then after the fix, we were able to achieve remote deletion in some of the attack vectors, but not remote DB deletion. So we reported once again, and Microsoft decided this time, based on the left working attack vector, that it's a moderate denial of service and may fix them at a later point. Kaspersky did not release a patch. They do plan to mitigate the attacks, but currently, as far as we know, all attack vectors are still possible. This is the GitHub repository where you can find our EDR Racer tool. We just released it now. We support all the attack vectors we have discovered and even allow you to expand them to a new attack vector easily. So I'll wait a few seconds to allow you to take a picture if you want. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.